the lessors accounting for a capital lease in a direct financing cases. Let's read and analyze the question together first. Uh, the corporation and lessors of lesser of office machine purchased a new machine for $650,000. That is the amount of cost on December 31st year two, which was delivered the same day by prior arrangement to the Ortiz company, the lessee. That means they are not, the deal corporation uh, is not uh, the manufacturer. That's why we say this is direct uh, financing. And the leased asset has estimated useful life of nine years, which coincide with uh, the lease term. Okay, good. So, but anyway, uh, you don't uh, have to uh, worry about uh, the depreciation year there because the lesser uh, does not uh, depreciate their asset because the asset is transferred uh, from the uh, uh, the the deal's corporation balance sheet. Uh, to Ortiz company. The Ortiz company should depreciate this asset on the balance sheet. Okay, at the end of the lease term, the machine will revert to DO. The, we have guaranteed residual value of $70,000. That value also a part of uh, the minimum uh, lease payment. When we uh, the discount with some percentage, we should include this to calculate the present value of minimum lease payment. This implies interest rate 8% and increment the borrowing rate is 10%. So we choose the, uh, the lower rate uh, between two. So we're going to choose the 8% to discount the future cash flows. And then the lease rental consists of nine equal annual payments, but we don't have any amount of how much it's going to be. So uh, we will calculate uh, from $650,000 of the cost of this machine, which is deemed as uh, the fair market value of the machine as uh, uh, the capital lease obligation or capital lease, uh, the asset on the lessee side. And the first of which was paid <coughs> uh, on December 31st, year two. So you should uh, be aware of this, the, the period as well. Because usually uh, when you are facing those kind of questions, December 31st, you uh, would uh, misunderstand. Oh, that is the end of, uh, pay end of the year payments. So you would consider how uh, that is the ordinary uh, annuity, uh, the payment. But this case is not because the when uh, the corporation, the dear corporation purchased this asset and then they delivered the same day, here same day uh, to let's see. So the payment day of the first day of payment, December 31st means annually due. The payment is started today. So you should uh, be aware of it. And then the lease is appropriately accounted for a, a direct finance lease by okay so this now clearly uh, understand that the transaction is direct finance lease that means oh, we don't have any sales account or cost of goods sold account because we are not as a, a deal corporation deal corporation is not uh, the manufacturer okay and then we have the information of present value factors uh, that is one-time uh, future cash flows, and then annuity due here at eight eight percent for ninth period. Also, we have these factors to apply uh, the, the, the annual uh, payment. Okay, then let's jump into the first question. Compute the annual renter under the lease. Uh, enter amount rounded the nearest dollar. Anyway, we don't have any information of the annual lease payment, right? So uh, what we have to do is to get uh, this annual uh, rental payment. So cost of the lease machine is $650,000, right? Then we don't have any information uh, related to 
uh, the annual rent payment because annual rent payment is the objective. So in this case, we have the same amount. And that capital lease asset and capital lease obligation is the account to be recorded in less C's. Then what is the present value of an annuity due? Okay, here we go. Annuity due, 8%. We choose this. So uh, when you calculate uh, the, the annual renter payment, we use uh, the cost of lease machine, whatever. Okay, then divided by the annuity due factors, and then we come up with that amount. What we practiced in class was this amount times this, right? And then we come up with the capital lease asset in the uh, lessee's accounting. But that is the, the totally opposite, the backward uh, to get uh, the annual rental payment every year. You guys understood? Okay. And then what expense should Ortiz record for the year end December 31st? Okay, the question is asking uh, the expense in the income statement, right? In the income statement of let's see, uh, we have a two types of expense. One, interest expense, because the Ortiz uh, should recognize expense when they borrow uh, the money or asset when they use. We uh, apply uh, the, the, the matching principle. And then plus amortization, depreciation is the duty of the, the lessees, right? Okay, then let's start the first one, the liability under this, right? The same value. And then deduct lease payment to December because this is annually due. The payment is started from today, so we deduct this amount and then we come up with uh, the, this amount on this uh, December thirty first year two when they start uh, this uh, lease contract. Then interest rate to calculate is now eight percent. We apply, and let's see the Ortiz use this amount. This the amount is obligation for one year. So we apply this 8% on to this balance, right? Because again, the question is asking, what is the interest expense and December 31st, year three, right? So the principal is this amount and that we apply 8% there. And then plus amortization, okay? Amortization, how to get it? We have the capital lease asset here, right? Capital lease asset. But you should consider, do we have the, any residual value? Yes, we have residual value, $70,000 guaranteed residual value. So you should consider $70,000 as a residual value and then a straight line, uh, the depreciation, and then we come up with this amount of interest, uh, no, no, this amount of depreciation expense, and then Sum of these two expense is 108737 and should be recorded on the balance sheet on the lessee's, uh, the, uh, on the income statement on the lessee's side. Next, let's move on to lessor's part. As we discussed in uh, the class, they should disclose a full disclosure uh, the requirement. So gross lease rental receivable include the total amount of, of the, the lease payment plus interest income, right? Interest income. So in order to get the unearned interest revenue, we should deduct the cost of leased machine, right? So compute the amount of gross lease rental receivable and the earned interest revenue that deal should disclose at the inception of the lease December 30, uh, first year two. So this gross receivable is now, we should calculate, as I mentioned, the total amount of renter payment undiscounted. That means that include all the interest, unearned interest even, right? So we have annual renter, payment amount times simply nine. 
that is total amount, right? Expected to be uh, collected, uh, including uh, the, the interest as well. And then that's minus the cost, right? The cost amount. And then the another interest revenue is this. Okay. That's understood? Good. Okay, now we have all data, all information in the, in the tables. So let's create a journal entry. Uh, the journal entry work is the essential uh, process to, uh, to, do, to complete a financial statement. That is the initial process to create the balance sheet and income statement, right? So you should know debit and credit account clearly, right? So here, let's just start from the C's uh, journal entry, the, the old case one. In the inception date, we have also payment, right? The cost of a lease is the same as capital lease asset. This is the same amount we already calculated here. And then that amount exactly the amount owed to pay, right? is deemed as the instrument payment. But when they start this lease term, they also pay, right? How much amount? Here, we calculate annual rent payment when they start this lease term today. So this amount they have to pay, right? That is the pure obligation amount without any interest because this is annually due starting from today. And then interest, expense in a year, right? Because in a year, they should calculate some uh, the interest payment and the, the obligation, right? Let's do the simple one here. Cash amount, the same amount here. And then interest expense, how do you calculate it? Yes, we already calculated it before here. Interest expense for one year. The balance was 505, 553,000, and then we apply 8% on it, right? So, because again, the 8% is, uh, we use the, the lower the rate, right? Requirement rate of return or the lower rate, rate return too, right? And then we use this 8% there. So, this amount here. And then, that is the pure obligation amount except the interest expense from this, the cash amount. So always you should uh, the, the consider or take into account cash amount is comprised of interest and uh, the, the, the principal, right? So we can just simply subtract this amount from the cash payment. So <clears throat> that amount is actually we should reduce as a lessee the OTC should reduce from this, and minus this, and this, right? And then they have new, uh, the balance of uh, capital lease obligation. And then we should record depreciation, right? Depreciation expense. Because this asset is on the OTC balance sheet account. Depreciation, where is it? Okay, we already calculate here, right? And then accumulate depreciation. We should reduce the value of capitalist asset on the balance sheet of uh, Ortiz, the same process. And then we want to know the income statement, in, uh, the, the effect, the depreciation expense. Here you go, depreciation, the same amount here, and the interest expense. And then the total amount is this. We already calculated, right? Um, and then let's move on to the search a general entry by field. Inception payment receivable, as I mentioned, that is the total gross amount of less the least the receivable, right? Receivable. You should remember they have full disclosure requirement. And then what is the amount? That is the amount including interest, even an earned amount, right? So 
we should put which one we have calculated have we calculated right here we go we have already calculated that is how this calculated just annual rental payment times nine right that is the full amount included as uh, the, the interest as well and then what account do we need they purchase this asset and then they lend this uh, asset so what is this asset machine right machine out that the amount of cost right that the cost of this asset is this right and then the difference between two between two amount is what right and then the interest revenue this is the liability account because Theo recognized already the full amount of gross lease receivable but this is not the pure receivable amount the cash to receive because that amount is included interest to be received to, to, to receive so they have to recognize liability a non interest revenue as we discussed in the class when we receive or when you receive cash or when you receive asset without any service then we recognize the, the, the non revenue the same concept the same concept as this right so this uh, non interest is the difference between two we already calculated like uh, there and then in the inception we received what the cash now is totally totally the reflection of this reflection of this right so cash amount we received is this amount right and then by this amount we should reduce right the gross lease receivable right and then this transaction uh, is held exactly uh, the, on the date when they started this lease term December 31st year 2 right so there's no any interest transactions right but one year later there is interest recognition amount let's just start from the each one payment one year later they receive the same amount of cash then they should reduce by this amount they should reduce right the grocery is payable the receivable so we should reduce because we receive this amount right as a total amount of is payment uh, the including interest and the, the pure uh, the receivable amount right then what is the interest revenue here or here interest revenue is a credit account right so interest revenue is the uh, the credit account that they increase then how do we calculate this right right we have this amount but this amount is not the pure the cash to receive amount we should deduct this we want to come up with some actual cash to receive because that is the balance to be uh, to calculate uh, the interest revenue right and minus we receive this amount as well right so times eight percent right i'm oh, sorry times eight percent so that amount should be exactly the same as interest expense the lessees uh, should recognize right the same amount you got it okay even you can then you can use like that way because this machine's amount is uh, the value actual the value of the receivable excluding the interest part right so anyway you come up with the same amount by this amount now we reduce what exactly do you remember again the when we uh, serve our uh, service to our, our uh, customers we recognize the revenue and then on the credit debit and then on the debit side we reduce an under revenue we have recognized another revenue as a liability once we uh, the received this, uh, this uh, the, the benefit then we should reduce this liability by this amount 
Okay, this is it. So I wanted to practice this exercise several times until you get used. The skill uh, is planted by your uh, planted in your gut by practicing a lot of times. Right? So uh, uh, let's finish this exercise today.